Apostle Othniel and Reverend Nancy Mwabili of CRT, Shofar House of Prayer, invite you to Shalom Kenya. Shalom, shalom, and God bless you. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the window of Shalom Kenya war and worship season 2018. God is going to bless you as you join us from the 3rd to the 23rd of September. September, we will have moments to worship, to praise, and to magnify God together, beginning with a pre-conference school with Pastor James Kawalia, ongoing with several ministers of the gospel right here at the Shofar House. But on the 9th of September, at the gate of the new year 5779, we will be at the City Hall Way. And on the 19th of September 2018, we will have breakfast. Fasting night dubbed Yom Kippur. On the 23rd of September, we shall minister to street families through a medical camp from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Feast of Tabernacles. Guest ministers will be Apostle Robert Nzomba, Apostle Julius Subi, Prophet Joash Midiwo, Apostle James Kawalia, Pastor John Magangi, among others. Guest worship minister will be Pastor Israel Ezekiah. Shalom Kenya 16 days of prophetic prayer and worship will be held at the CRT Shofa House located behind Technical University, former Kenya Polytechnic, next to Railways Museum. I believe God is going to bless you as you participate in this phenomenal season of warring for the destiny of the nation. This is our season of revival. I believe God has called you to be a prophecy harvesting generation. You're blessed for life. See you there. More grace to you. Amen. Chosen generation Called for to show His excellence All I require for life God has given me
we called? We called to somewhere deeper, to somewhere, to that greatest place we ever can dream about. We ever can dream about. So many people, they don't know this. So many people, they not tested this, what we have today. It's so, it's so precious to have it. It's so precious to, to walk after, after God. It's not bor boring life. It's not. It's not boring life completely. If you really follow in Jesus, it never can be boring life. Like, it's never, never, never can be boring life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Why don't you look at somebody, tell them, take a look at me, I'm a wonder. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. Hallelujah. Why don't you? It's true. We are wonders. Amen? Amen. And in all these days, we are getting better in Jesus' name. Amen? Okay. My tongue slips when I sing this part, but I know you can sing it. Can we try? Okay, look at somebody. Take a look, me, I'm a wonder. Doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? Cause I know I take a look, me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. You see his glory. Cause I know if you want to boast well, talk to somebody. Pastor Kimari, Angali of Turinga Kido, Nuna Shati Poha. Yeah, Ringa Nam Tupana Sifiwe. That's how you testify. Here we go, take a look. Take a look, me, I'm a wonder. Doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? Cause I know why. Take a look, me, I'm a wonder. Doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? Cause I know who I am. Take a look, me, I'm a wonder. Doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? Cause I know who I am. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. You see his glory. Cause I know who I am. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. Doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? Cause I know who I am. I walk in the power. I walk in the cross. I live my life of favor. Cause I know I'm walking. I walk in the power. I walk in the cross. I live my life of favor. Cause I know I'm walking. I walk in the power. I walk in the cross. I live my life of favor. the first scriptures I ever memorized after I got born again is Philippians 4 13 that says I can do all through Christ can you bless God that you can do so many wonderful things you can do so many wonderful things so many wonderful things oh clap your hands oh clap your hands hallelujah Oh, clap your hands. Oh, ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Oh, with the voice of triumph. Oh, 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 oh clap your hands. Fire! 
Can you tell your neighbor, shout us out? Shout, Hosanna, Jesus is here. Shout, Hosanna, he rose from the grave. Tell them, come and lift him up, Hosanna. Can you tell your neighbor, say, shout, Hosanna. Shout, Hosanna, Jesus is here. Shout, Hosanna. Can you speak out what you want to see? Don't let the loss. We worship you. Can you say again? Now let the loss be found. Say. Now let the loss be found. That could not hold it down. His reason. part of it that I love that says the same power that rolled the stone away the same power alive in us today King Jesus we call upon your name no other name so we need the same power the same power the roll the stone away the same power alive
is a man. You are holy. You are holy. Holy, holy. Holy. Are you Lord? This is the evening um, of the beginning of another day. Uh, so we are beginning day five today of 5779. And um, I just want us to project Psalm 91. We'll read it together. We'll just read it together and then I'll be bringing in the man of God to share the word of God. Today we are honored yet again here at the Shofar House to receive God's servant, our pastor, Pastor Fifi Fensil. Come on, let's put our hands together better for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. To God be the glory. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again. It's always a joy. It's always a joy to be where you are. Amen. Glory to God. And so we're going to take this psalm together and then we're going to bring in the man of God. But um, as they project that, um, I'll ask our sister Eva. She's going to sing a special song uh, this evening uh, for us. She's all the way from, is it Armenia or Ukraine? It's both. All right. <laughs> so, so she's going to sing. Uh, she's going to sing unto the Lord. And uh, we're going to just celebrate the name of the Lord. Her second name, that's what I'm trying to avoid it. It's, it's a Maasai sounding name, I think. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But I want to just to celebrate God together. 
and um, she's going to take us um, just take a song and then we're going to come back and take this uh, together and then we're going to bring in the man of God and I know that the Lord is going to bless us indeed amen so let's receive her with a wonderful God bless you glory to God amen
Jesus. Let's appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give our sister Eva a good God bless you. Good God bless you. Amen. Amen. We thank God so much. We thank God so much. Um, as I said, we're beginning day five in this 5779. Uh, but it is also day six um, that we are beginning in this 16 days of warring and worship i know we started with a pre-conference worship prayer and deliverance school and we are going strong in the lord so we've been here uh, for the past approximately now it's is it this is entering the 11th day um, but we thank god so much for his grace and his favor look at your neighbor and tell them i am strong amen uh, because if they that wait upon the lord the bible says they will come on they will do what amen 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 that's wonderful so new strength is coming to us and the best is yet to come uh, the good thing with god is there is always sugar at the bottom of the cup so you just need to stir it up and stuff is coming up amen and so tonight you're going to actually say that that is truly a faithful saying <laughs> praise the name of the lord we thank god so much for the grace of god i want us just to take this uh, psalm together and then i bring in the man of god um, in Jesus name uh, we will declare it uh, together remember we are personalizing it uh, we are personalizing the word so don't talk about the you your neighbor don't speak to somebody this one you will say you know you I sit down because in this year 5779 we see ourselves sitting in the high God's presence and we'll spend the night in Shaddai's shadow and let God show himself strong on our behalf in Jesus' name. So that we can all just speak uniform uh, customization. You'll allow me to say it first and then you say it after me. So that we don't come up with different versions of English uh, when we are trying to customize it. So uh, say it after me. I will sit down, I will sit down in, the in the high God's presence. And I will spend the night, spend the night in, Shaddai's in Shaddai's shadow. Now our people are the thing as soon as we are finishing the other verse, I need to say this because I don't want to say it again. Keep flowing with us. Keep flowing with us. Amen. Uh, that's why you're there. Uh, let's go ahead, verse 2. Um, I will say this. God, you are my refuge. I trust in you and I'm safe. That's right. You rescue me from hidden traps and you shield me from deadly hazards your huge outstretched arms they protect me under them I am perfectly safe your arms fend off all harm I will fear nothing 
not wild wolves in the night not flying arrows in the day not disease that prowls through the darkness not disaster that erupts at high noon for even though others succumb all around and drop like flies right and left no harm will even graze me I will stand untouched and watch it all from a distance watch the wicked turn into corpses yes because God is my refuge the high God my very own home evil can't get close to me harm cannot get through the door for he has ordered his angels to guard me wherever I go if I stumble they will catch me their job is to keep me from falling I will walk unharmed among lions and snakes and I will kick young lions and serpents out of the path for I will hold on to my God for dear life he has promised he will get me out of any trouble he will give me the best of care for in 5779 I choose to know him I choose to trust him I will call on my God and he will answer he will be on my side in the bad times he will rescue me and then he will throw me a party come on touch two people and tell them party times it's party time in the kingdom of god hallelujah because this is our season of rescue and the god who rescues you also throws you a party somebody say hallelujah verse 16 let's go ahead no no you're saying it after me you're, you're forgetting amen <laughs> praise the name of the lord come on say i receive a long life and i receive a long drink of salvation Let's, let's make the long as long as you, you know you know when you're blowing a shofar there's something that's normally called a tequila gadola the tequila gadola you blow it as far as you can you get it so i want us to take it as far as we can because the rest the lord will take care of the long and the long drink and the long life is that okay so you push it to your limit where you will stop god's going to take over and you will enjoy the rest. Come on now. I receive a long Salvation. Come on, somebody put your hands together for Jesus. 
to God. We bless the name of the Lord so much. Now, we we're going to take a song, Pastor Kamau. We just declare, we lift you high. Be lifted high. For your glory, be lifted high. Now, as we sing that song, uh, the man of God is going to come in and just take us uh, in a time of hearing the word of God and as the spirit of the Lord is going to lead him. Um, uh, there are these powerful books. They'll be available at the desk there. John and C4. Uh, it, it's a powerful book about work ethic, about preparation and being preferred. And that's a season of favor. Um, but there's something you must do. Touch somebody and tell them you must do some stuff. Yeah, we are talking about fruitfulness. We're talking about bearing fruit, much fruit and fruit that will remain. Uh, but there's something you must do to enter into the fullness that God has for you in this season. And this carries powerful nuggets, uh, very wonderful tidbits in the word of God uh, to inspire, to challenge, and to rebuke and reprove us because some of us are sometimes just plain lazy. Look at somebody and tell them, he's not talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I want us to just take this song and as we lift up our voices, lifting up Jesus, the man of God is going to take us from there and I know that the Lord is going to bless us together in Jesus' name. Be lifted high, be lifted high, for your glory be lifted high, be lifted high, be lifted high, be lifted high. Greatness. Amen. 
Yeah, it looks like some don't believe you are great, but uh, I, I say it one more time. What an honor and a privilege to be among greatness. Apostle, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your generosity. I know it's caused you pain and disappointment in the past, but the Lord is putting much in your hands. Amen. And listen to this carefully. He's putting much at your disposal. Amen. So don't get tired. Sorry for the mic. He's working it out. It'll work out, all right? Um, but before I, 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 I start sharing what the Lord would have us get into, um, I want to call for two testimonies. How many were here last year when I was here? All right, so not, not a... Can I, see my, can I see my hand? I mean, let me see. All right, so there's some that were clearly not here. All right. So, uh, for those that were here, I, I need a testimony, not for me. You know, we, we're celebrating what God has done in 5, 7, 7, 8, all right? And it's important to honor the testimonies of the Lord. So, it's not about me, it's about the Lord. Now, what God wants is that the fruit must remain, or else... We are not doing something right. Got it? We ought to get out of this mindset of hearing new things all the time and doing nothing about what we had before. So if it's not working, then why we keep getting new messages? Because God builds line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. So if your line is not correct. He's not going to put another line on top of it. No builder does that. If it's crooked, he would make sure it's straight before he puts... Yeah, so I don't know who you are who needs to hear this. Stop looking for a new word and make sure that the old word, you're working with it. Yes. All right, you don't get to day three of creation if you haven't done day two of creation. God does not work that way. He does not promote you beyond your strength. Glory is heavy. It will kill you if you haven't built capacity to handle the glory. All right, so sometimes it looks like God is slow, but he's not. It's just because he's waiting. That's why he says, count it all joy when you go through diverse trials for the trying of your faith. Work at what? patience and when patience has finished his work you'll be perfect lacking nothing good because any blessed thing you get you maintain it by patience if you are not sure go and have a child and see you kill that thing that you call a gift yeah so God needs to do some work in us to build us to be strong to be able to handle the blessing that is coming you know so that the blessing doesn't get in your head when you get blessed with money it doesn't get in your head the devil doesn't have a problem allowing you to get money because he, he knows if it gets into your head, it gets you anyway. Yeah, but God would always make sure you, you are built enough. That's why he said to Abraham, now I know. Now I know you fear me. Can someone lift their hands and say, I would, I would do much work with what God has given me. Or oh, say it like you believe it. I'll do much work with what God has given me. So quickly, I'm, I'm, I'm not, look, anyone with a testimony, quickly come. Quickly come. Uh, uh, you, you don't want to eat into my time. <laughs> yeah. So nothing happened between the last time I came and here. Oh my goodness. Then I, I don't need to speak in here. I, I think I just need to go home. All right. So you're going to be, it, you're going to be very brief. Yes. Okay. Straight to the point. Praise God, Church. I'm Catherine Dalton. Last time I was here, it was my first time to be in this fellowship. I was single. And I bless God because what I desired for God, He gave to me. He gave me a godly man. A man sold out to God and we served together in the ministry, although he's not in Kenya. And I bless God for what He's doing in my life. Bless God. Amen. All right. Now, who else? 
Who else? All right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. My name is Agres Kigo. The last time the prophet of God was here, he called me here and he said, some people are going to give me money. And he told people, whoever has money for this, let them bring. But nobody showed up. <laughs> but in the, I mean, at the right time, people have been giving me money, not really from this congregation. So I thank God. Amen. <laughs> now, you know, the, the, the reason why I did this, and the reason why God wants this, is that his word must come to pass. I'll say it one more time. His word must come to pass. If it does not come to pass, then it's not God. He doesn't speak and it does not come to pass. When he speaks, it must come to pass. Alright, so it's not gimmickry. God is not, he's not a joke. He's not a trister. He's not trying to uh, uh, sell you on something that he cannot stand behind. He's exalted his word above his name. His word must come to pass. Can someone pump their fist and say to themselves that God's word concerning my life must come to pass. It must come to pass. It must come to pass. It must come to pass. Come to pass. See, enough of we allowing ourselves to talk what God says he's going to do out of our life. Enough of allowing circumstances to be stronger than God's word. Enough of, of allowing the devil to whisper to you that, you know, what God said he does not really mean it. It must come to pass. All right? And I must be so interested in it coming to pass, be so convinced of it coming to pass, that when I hear God, I take him serious. Yeah. You see, if, if you don't know that what he's saying is serious, then you will not take it serious. But if you know what he's saying is serious, your amen will be different. Your, 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 your agreement will be different. Your, your desire to hold on to what he's saying will be different. And when you are down, you still hold on to it. When you are not even excited about circumstances, you still have an excitement about what God has said to you. You still have a, a step. You know, you may be like Jacob limping, but you'll still be moving. You know, Job knew that God is God. He said, even though he slay me yet. Yet. Why? Because he's, he will redeem me. He said, I know. Not I think. I know my redeemer. You must know that he is a redeemer. His word will come to pass. You know, two people. Joshua concluded. None. Of the good promises of God ever failed. Every one of them came to pass. Every one of them. Then Solomon also came on the scene and said, None of the good promises of God ever failed. Every one of them came to pass. Now you gotta understand these two guys had a tough time. You know, Solomon was not liked. His mom was a woman, everybody said, uh, came in from the back door so for him to become king when his own brother scheming to take it away from him the day he dedicated the temple he said every one of the good promises of God every one of them we're, we're, we're tweaking too much when we get it right Let's stay there. Can you take the highs down? Every one of them. Can you lift your hands to God and thank him for the word he's given you in the past. Thank him for the things he's spoken to you as you read your word. Thank him for everything that he's said to you. Thank him. Thank you. 
I believe you. Thank him for those that are yet to come to pass. Knowing that they will come to pass. Thank him for them that you, you may have been discouraged about. But you're saying thank you. I know you would honor your word. I know you would honor your word. It will come to pass. The word of God concerning this ministry will come to pass. The word of God concerning Kenya will come to pass. The word of God concerning your house will come to pass. The word of God concerning your children, it will come to pass. The word of God concerning, concerning your business, it will come to pass. The word of God, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Thank you. Thank you that your word concerning my life, concerning my wife, concerning my ministry, concerning my children, concerning the nations, concerning my space, my jurisdiction, everyone that you have given me influence over. The word of God concerning them will come to pass. Every word, every word, every word will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. So here we are, lifting up our hands to you. You know that song, right? Oh God. Here we are, giving thanks for all. And us we pray and worship your holy name. You are here dwelling within our praise, and here we are lifting. testimony comes out I just want to encourage you to think about this the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of what exactly so this lady stood here and said people will give her money all right not necessarily from her immediate space can someone welcome resources from other spaces into your space yeah you had a testimony she, she said God did that for her I didn't do it. God did it for her. Yeah. Another person stood here and said, well, I got married. Can, 
can you ask that the things that you're, you're, you've been scheduled in heaven for, that they will come to pass? That by the hearing of the testimony, let that same God that did it for them, who is not a discriminator, he's no respecter of persons, he will do it for me. Does anyone have a need that needs an answer? Can you call in? Can you call in? Can you call in? of God's testimony to begin to work on your behalf. I receive from, from the impetus of the testimony. Thank you Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, a guy who was lame, alright, got healed. As a result of his healing, 5,000 people came to the kingdom. More than when Peter preached. That's the power of a testimony. Don't joke. You know, sometimes when somebody is sharing a testimony, you, you, it, you may think, ah, oh, well, whatever. It's not whatever. This is what God does. Yeah. Alright? That's why it, obeying that, you know, he called the, the testament a testimony. Yes. Alright? That testimony was supposed to be kept in the Ark of the Covenant. They were supposed to honor, you know, it was a, 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 a what do you call it? Um, it was like a marriage vow. It was proof that God loved man, that he could come into agreement with them. That was testimony. So God has a word for me that would engineer my future. You know, there is a word for everything. God has a word for every circumstance I have. Every challenge I have, there is a word. You know, Jesus said to Satan, man shall not live by bread alone but by what every word every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God that means if I'm supposed to live by every word that means there is a word for every circumstance you and I would have to go through can you lift your hands and say there is a word for me me. can you call your words to come Yes, there is a word for you. There is a no, your challenge, whatever the challenge is, there is a word for you. You don't have to go too far. God knows your address. Look, stop thinking that I brought you a word and start thinking God brought me a word. And you know why the word is important? Because that's how we live. Man shall not live outside the word. So if that is going to be what governs us, then I need a word today. So when he says, this is the day that the Lord has made. My goodness, you didn't think about it. This is the day. This is that day you've been waiting for. This is the day. Not tomorrow. This one. It's the day that the Lord has what? Made. Meaning he fashioned it. The last time I checked, he loaded days with blessings. My goodness. So there are blessings that are loaded in today for you and I. So everyone here, you've got to be sitting at the edge of your chair saying, where, 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 where's the word for me? Where's the word for me? Look, when Esau lost the blessing, he went to his father. He asked him, don't you have a reserve blessing? Reserve even works don't you remember that woman who was being called a dog Jesus said I can't give the bread of the children to dogs he said even the crumbs all I need is a crumb and I get healed don't give me the loaf just a little drop there was a Roman guy who wanted Jesus to heal his child Jesus said I'm coming to you I I said don't come we don't have to cook. We don't have to do all this. Just speak. There is a word for my child in your mouth. Can you just open it, speak it, and that's all I need. You, I don't need a sermon. I just need a word. I, I don't need you to get into all kinds of... No, 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 no. Just give me my word. I pray you will get your word today. I pray that within these days I'm with you, you will get your word. That will... And if you will come hungry enough, if 
it will come desperate enough. You know, God does not waste resources. He gives seed to the sower. So if you are eater, he'll give you bread. But if you come out as a sower, he'll give you seed. You know, if you're hungry, one bread, no problem. He'll give you that. But I smell sowers here. Amen. Yeah, people who, who want to be in this thing for the long haul. You know, you don't want to come again for another bread. No, no, yeah. You know, you don't want to be a manna guy. You know, manna, manna is good, but I want promised land. Manna sees now we can function with the promises of God. We can enter from harvest to harvest. May the miracles of God be real. That when you see a miracle, it provokes another miracle in your life. That you will not settle down and say, you know what? I'm just staying. No, 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 no. The word of God, the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. You will not read your Bible the same again from this day. Yeah. Yeah. You will take the word serious. You know, this business of, you know, you, you only read it when we are in here. You only read it when you are in trouble. Come on, get off that. Yes. You are better than that. Yes. Do you hear me? You are better than that. So I command your spirit to arise. Amen. And connect with the word of God. Amen. Desire the word of God. You know, it says desire it like milk. You see our children cry for milk. Mm. Babies, they you know, and you know the exciting things about babies crying? You know, usually men don't know this, but the women know, you know. You know, breastfeeding is linked to crying. When the baby cries, the lactating mother produces the milk. And the baby does not have to be in proximity. The baby could be miles away, but as long as that baby cries, that mother's breast will start filling up. That's why they can, they can sense that my baby needs me. May heaven's milk find you. Amen. Yeah, may you begin to release a sound from here. Say, God, I need my, my word. I need my milk. I, that I, for my space, for Kenya, for, for my city, for my village, I need the word that will change my village. Yes. There is a word for your village that will transform it. There is a word for your city that will transform it. You need to get a hold of that word. I pray that God will cause our minds to change. You know, be ye transformed by the word. So once your mind changes about something, you, you, you change. Be ye what? May you be transformed. See, I want some people living here different. When you get out of there, somebody meets you and it's like, mm, something happened to you. Be transformed. You see, if you are still the same old, same old, after encountering the word, and you are still the same old, same old, there's something wrong with the picture. You can't have fellowship with God and not look different. You cannot have fellowship with God and smell the same. He said, there's a fragrance called the fragrance of God. Yeah. Paul said that you may exude that fragrance. You know, fragrance can, when someone passes with fragrance, sometimes when they leave the room, the fragrance is still there. When they sit around and they leave, the fragrance is, can, can the fragrance of, of healing still be on you i smell some healing on somebody when they sit and they leave the environment people go and sit there and they get their healing listen if the dry bones of of a dead prophet could raise the dead then how much more that anointing in a living person like you and me dead but still anointed it was inside I pray that the word of God would be here, even your hair. You know, this morning I was talking to that group about DNA, right? You know what DNA is? You know what DNA is, right? It's, uh, it's what keeps, we can reproduce you if you get your DNA, all right? So it's, and you don't need much, just a little. See, that's why. Just a minute. That's why this jacket now is anointed. 
That's like I can put it on someone that they fall under the power. You got it? Yeah. It's, it, it's, 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 you know, the spiritual DNA is more powerful than DNA. Because if you believe the natural DNA, then I need you to respect that the word of God is more powerful than DNA. This thing is mind shifting. You know, the lady who serves, make sure I get something warm to drink when I finish speaking. Ah, she wasn't feeling well one of the days. And that day I didn't drink something warm, I drank from a bottle. You know, and our bottles, the, the one I asked for is a very short one. So of course I didn't drink it all and I put, and I left. She went and drank from it. She said to herself, if this guy is anointed, there's something in this bottle. She drank it and got her healing. I did it. I'm talking about spiritual what? Yeah. Sometimes when an apostle sits down and he leaves, go and sit there. <laughs> All right. You think I'm being too deep, right? Let me be practical to you. When I was a kid, my parents' bed, there was a mystery about that bed. When I was sick, after giving me all the medications and I'm not doing well, they'll bring me into their bed. By the next morning, I'm well. Now, I thought that it was their bed. When I also got children and they were sick, I bring them into my bed. By the next morning, there is something about that altar. See, that altar that raised them. Haven't you noticed that of all the furniture in your house, is your bed that the children want? <laughs> don't mess with that altar. See, when the Bible says, don't defile. Every word must come to pass. Amen. Every word. Every word. Not some. Every word. By the, by, by the way, you guys are phenomenal. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Keep it going. Amen. Every season has a new sound. Yeah. yeah. And the Bible says uh, when we gather, we, we should uh, minister to one another in songs, in psalms, in spiritual songs. Yeah. And you've got to get some spiritual songs in here. Amen. Yeah. Because every word must come to pass. Yeah, meaning everyone has a capacity to be a composer. Yes. But for you that are gifted, mm -hmm. yeah, if you don't have songs, it's because you are not believing that every word must come to pass. It's good to sing other people's songs, but when you start singing your own song, yeah, you will release a certain rhythm. So I need you to trust God for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You are too skilled not to hear from heaven. So, what God's word does is that it must bring transformation. It must cause us to be reformed. It must bring us into permanence. I'm not talking about, you know, just, you know, it was a good service. No, 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 no. There must be permanence. And then it must move me into sustainability. All right? So, it's not enough. It's not enough. If the change is not sustained. So don't settle for anything less. Yeah. He said he's coming for fruit that remains. That means every change must be sustained. Back the devil off and tell him. Affliction will not come the second time. Yes. Do you understand? Sometimes we need to enforce what God is saying in our lives. We, we need to say, you know what? Whatever he does is forever. He's everlasting. That means he doesn't stop. Favor is for a lifetime. So till you are buried. The favor you got last year is not going to run out. I renew it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you hear? The money, it will not stop. It will grow. It's for a lifetime. 
You are going to stay married. Do you hear me? You are going to stay married. You, you, can someone stamp their feet and say, never, never again. Look, did you see Joseph go backwards? No. It looked like he was going backwards, but it was always a progression. It's from glory to what? My goodness. Did you hear yourself? From glory to what? Glory. Yeah, so it's not from glory to grass. Oh. I call in the next glory. Yes. I call in your next glory. Yes. Call in your next glory. Yes. Look, Moses said, Hey, who which minister has seen much more than Moses? He said, God said, I, I, I'll take you into the promised land. I will let the angel go with you. Uh, you will defeat your enemies. You will possess. He said, uh-uh, God, if you don't go with me, I want the record to be established that I walked with you. Yes. We are going from glory. This angel business, others have worked with angels. It's enough. I need to go to... <laughs> glory to glory. So I refuse for you to submit. Oh, you know, that is how life is. Yes, that is how natural life is. But when you are operating in the kingdom, it's from glory to what? Glory. From faith to faith. Get some more faith. Don't settle for it. Don't allow it. Paul said, even though my outward man perishes, what is happening inside? It's renewed what? Day by day. So, there's always a forward going. Yeah. That's God for you. And carry this in your very breath. Let it be part of you. Somebody needs to love Kenya. Yeah. Now how do I love Kenya? I love it by caring for it. When you care for something, it's proof that you love. So this is not too deep, right? And what you love, okay. You know, how many sincerely think that love is weak? How many think that love, love, loving something is weak? You know, when you love is weak, you know. You don't want to show by hand. Okay, let me ask you this. Faith and love, which one is stronger? Because you read it. But you don't believe it yet. When I tell you I'll bring my love, yeah, to a matter, or I'll bring my faith to a matter, which one will you take? Love. Are you sure? Yes. You see? Now you are being honest. Yeah, because you think faith is stronger. Yeah? Okay, let me ask you this. Faith and hope, which one is stronger? You see? You see? Now, what you believe will govern your mind. Faith is a substance of what? Things hoped for. So, which one is bigger? Some are still saying faith. Faith is of what? So which one is bigger? Yeah. But in your brain, of old, faith was bigger than hope. Now if Paul wrote it in succession, in order of importance, then it's faith, hope, and what? Love. The three greats in the kingdom. You need to breathe it. You, you see, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you have to breathe faith, you have to eat faith, you have to think faith, you have you 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 carry faith. The just shall live by what? Faith. Yeah. So without faith, you are dead. Now how about hope? Don't cast away your hope. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Without hope, no airline will sell you a ticket, even if you have money. You can't climb any bus and don't have hope. Hope is destination. 
you got to say where you are going before you climb. If you don't know how, where you are going. You see, that's why you don't, you, you don't know where you are going. So the devil can slap you all the time. But if you know you are a king, you walk like one. You know you are a queen, you walk like one. If you know you are a nobody, you are not going anywhere. You will be killed. You will be, you'll be like a mere man. According to Psalms, you are not a mere man. You are here on assignment. There is a purpose for your life. You are a, the purpose of God wrapped in flesh with an assignment of the word of God waiting to happen and manifest. So you cannot settle without understanding that there is a hope for me. Don't you know that people kill themselves when they lose hope? A lot of suicides are a result of hopelessness. So the enemy comes to you and convinces you that you are dealing with a hopeless situation. When hope is taken away, you will lose your mind. People lose their brain because they, they have lost hope. They give up. And you die faster when you give up. And Jesus is your hope. Then when he talks about love. Now, faith can move mountains, right? Yes. So this is what I say. If faith can move a mountain, imagine what love can move. Imagine what love can move. How oh, that woman listening to me, that it looks like your child is, is disrespecting you. So you're also changing. Put on love. Yes. Employ the services of love. Love can cover a multitude of sin. For God so loved the world that he sent his only being. On the cross was love. And because of love, here I am. Here you are. Because of love, things change. Amen. Nobody can break love. Mm. Yes. Amen. You know, you, you cannot even go, deep. those of us who are in the school of prophecy, your prophecy is weak when you don't love. It's true. Your healing is weak when you don't love. True. Compassion. He had compassion for them. Love oozed out of his heart when he saw the guys who were lame and, and broken. And love, because of love, the anointing of God will flow. If you love Kenya, God will give you Kenya. It was because of love for sheep that God spotted David and said, if you will die for sheep, I'll give you the nation. I mean, who, who, I mean, come on, we're Kenyans. We, we, we deal with animals, right? Come on, one sheep. Why are you going to risk your life for one sheep? The sheep will reproduce in a few months. How many months? Come again. The next six months, right? And how many do they bring? You can get one or two, right? Yeah. So in six months, you, David, just wait. Let the lion go. Let it go. He has breakfast. Let him go. We won't tell daddy. In six months, we'll put it there. Yeah. We'll take care of them. David said, uh-uh. Lion, please. I love this sheep too much. It's not your breakfast. It belongs to my father. It's my assignment. It's my responsibility. So can you please give me back the sheep? You didn't ask me. This one is, has a future, has a destiny. So it goes into the lion's mouth to collect the sheep. Do you read it? I think I'm telling you a story. This is not uh, special effects. No, go and read it. Went into the lion's mouth and collected the sheep. This is not, no sound effects, no smoke. Bare hands. Went to collect the sheep. And then when he collected the sheep, he was going away and the lion said, David, I've been looking at you for a long time. I've never harassed you, but this time, you want to challenge me. You want to challenge me. So he tried to attack him. And he turned around and killed the lion. How did he kill the lion? The anointing of God came upon him. The grace that accompanies the word of God. He behaved as a king. So heaven said, behold the king. Anoint him like you anointed Samson. Give him power to deal with that. I mean, you and I read the account. 
David was a short guy, curly hair. He looked cute. He wasn't looking like a, a, a lion killer. But there is an anointing over your life. The day you will love Kenya. The day you will love what you are doing. God will begin to give it to you. If you are a minister listening to me, stop loving what you do and start loving the people. Oh yeah, there are some doctors who love what they do more than the patients. Or you haven't encountered a nurse that loves her pay more and taking care of you. They will inject you and shout on you. Can you lift your hands and say, I would learn to work with love. Yes, I will learn to operate with love. I see, I see God now speaking to you. Listen, when you have love for God, something happens. When you have love for the word of God. We're talking in this season, we have what? We, we come into a season of Ephraim, right? Double. I see the Lord crossing hands. Amen. But you see, he, he's not going to cross hands because out of Ephraim must come the people like Caleb who would put their neck on the line for the love of the word and the prophecy of God on their life. He said, I am as strong as I was 40 years ago. Give me the mountain, not the valley. Give me where the, the giants are. I'll take it. So when the hands were crossed and Caleb was being repositioned, the season has come where, you know, David, when Joseph had the children, first one was Manasseh, right? Yes. So God has made me to forget. Because sometimes when, when you are carrying all this burden of, of, of what has happened to you, yeah, coming into productivity is difficult. But God in his goodness gives me free. So God has blessed me in the midst of my affliction. But what Jacob said was, uh uh-uh. The patterns of the kingdom is that you can still get blessed in the midst of you not forgetting what happened to you. And what has happened to you should not hold you back. And I speak this to your spirit. That whatever has happened to you in this land or wherever you've been should not hold you back from getting promoted. Amen. You know, every now and then you, you say you want to forget. It's not your responsibility. God will make you to forget. Amen. And sometimes it's not, it's not good you forget. If you forget the fire burns, you put your hand in it again. So it's not about forgetting. It's about understanding that the sting is taking out. And you will remember it and it will be a testimony unto God. Amen. You won't give glory to the pain. You will give glory to the, to the saving grace of God. Do you understand me? It's not about forgetting. So, so that what happens? Why should I forget that you hurt me? Or if you forgive me, then you forget. Wrong. Next time, when I see that same thing coming, I jump. If I forget, I'll walk into that trap again. I don't mean any harm to you. I'll bless you any day. But David said, I was glad I was afflicted. If he forgot, how would he be glad that he was afflicted? He learned how to jump next time. (laughs) May you jump. Don't fall in the same hole. It's the simple that fall in traps because they forget. Can you lift your hands and say, God, thank you for your wisdom as I move. Thank you for your word. Come on, thank the Lord for it. Thank the Lord for it. Kata numruzikataya. Ragadagabaha. So we're talking about growing. Listen, it's not enough. It's come on, folks, it's not enough to know that you know we are in a season of da-da-da. Okay. It's not enough. There are a lot of things you know that are not blessing you. There are a lot of things I know that are not blessing me yet. Because I have not done anything about it. When you know of something, it's the beginning. Yeah? So when Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. 
So if you stop, something will go wrong. You got to continue. I came to encourage somebody's heart. You can't stop believing what God said. Amen. It's been two years. I don't care. Just keep going. Amen. You know, uh, 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 Apostle said the sugar is always under. Keep staring. You get there. Keep drinking. You'll get there. Anyone here discouraged? I came to tell you, you don't have business staying discouraged. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. When you are discouraged, join yourself with the living. Because when you join yourself with the living, there is what? Hope. For a dead dog. No, a dead lion is worse off than a living dog. True. So you come into church. Or the congregation of the righteous and you are discouraged look for somebody and join yourself with them Amen. the bible says that out of our bellies shall flow what rivers that means there are rivers flowing out of me there are rivers flowing out of you you shall be a tree that is what planted by the where do you think the rivers are plant yourself next to somebody and take your roots and suck life out of them out of them is coming life their testimony will keep you alive there are things i've been through that you don't have to go through and i stand as a testimony on your behalf i be a covenant for you you be a covenant for somebody because of god's delivering power in your life you stand and tell the devil back off Amen. connect yourself with somebody there's somebody look you think you the devil makes you think that's why when you are in trouble and the devil becomes your company he makes you stay away from the company of the righteous you know why is it that when people are sick they don't come to church the devil convinces you there's not enough anointing here but I promise you, there is enough grace in this place to set you free. If you will come here believing and you say, listen guys, I need some touch. I need a, the prayer of faith. Don't pray for me if you don't have faith. But I need the prayer of faith. So if you have faith, come. I'm ready to receive from you. And you will begin to see what will happen in this place. Miracles. The reason why we don't see miracles here and we see miracles in crusades is that people are ready. Out there here we sit sophisticated entertain me I'm not here to entertain you I didn't come to do that I came with waters I came that you would sink your roots deep and receive from my waters that you will live Amen. and you'll bear fruit and your fruit your leaves will not wither and whatever you do will prosper oh, yes. do you hear me whatever you do will prosper why the word of God must come to pass the word must come to pass when they preached in mark 16 the bible says and jesus accompanied them with signs and follow oh my goodness once the word is preached jesus gets involved Amen. unless it's not a word unless i'm here to do gimmickry but if i am not here to do gimmickry and i speak the word then may jesus jump behind the word and begin to do things with the word so all you need to do is understand it and cooperate with it keep the word Amen. Amen. what did david say thy word have i what hid in my heart that means treasure other versions will say in my heart that i will not want sin so if the word of god is treasure in your heart is kept in your heart sin will be bored there are certain things you can't do tomorrow because of the word being alive in you you know when david met goliath goliath was saying i'm going to kill you i will feed you to the dogs or whatever david said uh -uh, it is a wrong day i have been anointed to be king having yet been the king the word of god must come to pass so today is a bad day for you Goliath there is no prophecy on your head there is no prophecy on your head to begin I I have an oil I have favor I am my goodness God backs my my life now I am telling you that you cannot go down easy you cannot the word must come to us Come on, say it like you believe it. The word must come to The lady with her hands folded. I don't think you believe it yet. You know why? Whatever you believe, you release energy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's why when someone calls you a fool. Lady, come here. 
Quickly, quickly, let's preach. Let's preach together. Anytime God preaches with you, he blesses you. Amen. Are you married? Ah, it could be Advent. Come on, come on, quick. Come here. Hold my hand. Listen, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look. Look. Look, <laughs> look God is with you, sweetie. Yeah? Yeah? Look at me. God loves you. Hmm? I need you to look at me. I'll tell you something good. Yeah? God always has a good word for you. Yeah? Anytime you, you don't get a good word, it's not God. Come on. Look here. Look here. He's a good God. Yeah? Your, your past is not a, a determinant of your future. Your, your past does not... Um, you know, God looks and he says, he who sits in the heavens will laugh. Some of the things that have happened to you that you are crying, God is laughing about it. Join him. Join him. Let's laugh. Yeah? Now, any, anything you believe, are you listening to me? Yeah? Anything you believe, you, you, you... So, when I call you a fool, yeah, and you believe it, what happens to you? you no, no. When I say you are a fool and you believe, what happens to you? You become angry. You want to also insult back. Yeah, because you are a fool. But if I call you a fool and you are not a fool, you'll be like, who are you talking to? Yes. Fool is not my name. Yes. It's not my first name. Yes. It's not my middle name. Yes. It's not my last name. And for those of us in Kenya, it's not my village name either. Yes. So you called me fool. I don't know who you're talking to. Yes. And the last time I checked me, this guy, no. Mm -mm. This lady, pretty. They told you you're ugly. You serious? <laughs> look, look how fine you are. <laughs> Stop allowing everybody to determine your going. Yeah. The word of God. Yeah. You think God made a mistake? Or you want a different nose? <laughs> you know, some of us, not here. Some of us, you want to sit down with God and say, God, this... You know, you should have given me a little bit of high cheek and centered my nose a little bit. It is perfect for he who is coming. Somebody will be singing songs. I love you. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's hang around. That's hang around. What, what's happening to you? I'm happy. You're happy. Okay, let's, let's be, it's good to be happy. That, that's a mark of the kingdom. Yes. Mm? Righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. So if you are in church and you are sad, there's something wrong with you. Yes. You know why a, a lot of us don't to go, go to prayer meeting? Because prayer meeting doesn't make us happy. And the last time I checked the word of God, he says that you come from the place of prayer with joy. Yes. That means you are not praying. You are not talking to him. Because he does, he's not a killer of joy. How can he kill the thing he brings himself? Yes. That means what? Where are you going? <laughs> your hair. What's wrong with your hair? No, 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 no. Don't worry. Let's stand there. This is crazy. Ah, it doesn't matter. Look, God loves you whether your hair is off or not off. You see, some of you are laughing, but God is rearranging. See, look, some of, the, some, of the things that, some of the things that you think are important. Now, those of you in the uh, prophecy school, this is prophecy. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Some of the things that are so important to you are not a big deal for God. Yes. Yeah? I have my arms around you, and I didn't even see your hair. There are things you are concerned about that God is not concerned about. They don't mean anything. They don't mean anything. Come on, come on. No. I, are, are you, do, do you call yourself a shy person? No. Okay, so then you can hang. Is that your problem? We are alive too. 
If it was animals watching us, then I'll be scared. But <laughs> we are human beings watching us. And we are doing the right thing. So guys who are watching, she is a blessed woman. Amazing. You still want to go? Now, see, the problem is you don't understand what you're doing. And anything you don't understand, you will lose. See, you're in a hurry to go and sit down. What for? The kingdom of God is not in observation, it's in participation. And anytime you participate, you get to go higher. That's why sometimes in church it's not smart when they are singing that you are looking. You know where I live, when we go to the big stadiums, all right, the cameras only feature on people who are involved. Those who have painted their face crazy, those whose praises are very loud, those who have signs on, yeah, yeah, yeah. But those who are sitting there chilling. They are, not, they are not worthy of any news. Make yourself noticeable in heaven. God is looking for worshippers. That means he's looking. So when I'm in church, yes, I may be the head Kahun, but I don't care. I'm here for God. I forget you. When I finish meeting him, I can talk to you. But once I am here, I will prostrate. I will need. I need to fellowship with him. That is more important than seeing you. So when you don't understand, you don't adjust. Yeah. Understanding is a mystery of keeping anything. In all you're getting, get understanding. He created the world by wisdom. But by understanding, he established it. When you don't have understanding, that which is taught you, the enemy will steal it immediately. Go and check Matthew 13. He will take it immediately. But when you understand it, it will bear fruit. It will enter. So that which we are discussing today, that which you are engaged in today, if you would allow the spirit of understanding to come on you, you will not run on. You know, this thing that you want to go and sit down, somebody sitting here is wishing it was there. Yeah, you, 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 are, you are like, ah, I don't want to be here. God set you up. You're, yeah, God set you up. You heard what she said. I was, I was trying to leave. Yeah. See, God knows your address. So how come I turned around and saw you? No, no, you're not doing anything. You're not making any noise. <laughs> it's not maybe God. He knows your address. He knows your location. I, I, I pray that tonight is, is becoming real to you. Yeah, this is not a gimmick. This is not a show. You came to participate. This is life. We are before the word of life. Yeah, we are before the word of life. And we don't want to miss a thing. Can someone lift their hands to God and say, God, thank you. Yeah. Now, you can go take your seat. Come, give me a hug before. What's your name? Jen. So you're going to stay now, right? Oh, God. Give me a five. There you go. Enjoying yourself? Yeah, that's what the kingdom is about. Listen, if the word does not excite you, there's something wrong with you. I'm telling you, if the, I'm not talking about the boring preacher, I'm talking about the word of God. It has nothing to do with me. 
Right? Now, you know, when my wife sends me a text, yeah, you can also send me a text. I won't sleep with it. <laughs> but she sends me a text and she puts those the emojis with the eyes that are, are red with love. Then she leaves some hearts on the thing. You know how I read it? It jumps at me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't only jump at me. It begins to work in me. You know why? It's because of who is sending it. If you are in love with God and he sends you a letter, he sends you a text, he gives you a word. I'm telling you, the love between you and God will keep that word alive. So if your love for the word of God is gone down, check your love meter. The reason why it's boring is that you are falling out of love. When I fell in love with my wife, the letters, I used to put them under the pillow and sleep on them. As a matter of fact, those letters, I still have them. I don't know where they are in the house, but they are there. Years kept them. I don't throw her cards away. Then how much more the word of God? How much more the word of God? The day you treasure the word, the word will treasure you all. And then you will know the truth and the truth will set you. There's a level of deliverance that the word of God will do for you. I'm telling you, that word, you know the word, the word has power to make itself happen. Yes. It doesn't need your prayer. That word can do it. The more word you know, the more God you know. Peter taught us this secret. He said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you according to the knowledge of Christ. That means you can multiply your grace. You can multiply the peace of... Anyone need more peace? Go and multiply it. Focus on loving God. Focus on loving Jesus. I love you, Lord. Lift your hands to him. Bow your knees to him. Talk to him. Extend care to him. Jesus, I love you. You'll be surprised. The peace. Grace would increase. People wondering, how come you have so much grace? So, man, I'm in love with Jesus. That's what is cooking the thing. Now, when we talk about multiplication, I wish I had time to talk about multiplication. You don't understand multiplication. The power of multiplying is different from addition. Have I illustrated it to you before? Have I? You don't think so? All right, come, 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 let's, let's. Hey, you want to come again? <laughs> She's like, ah, enough of my mail. <laughs> All right, so you, you did math in school, right? Yes. All right, so we're going to do addition and we're going to do uh, multiplication. <laughs> All right, we're just starting at the beginning. Don't worry, we're not going to go to the top. Yeah? So, check, check this out. One plus one is what? Two. One times one is what? One. My goodness. So when we start multiplication and we start addition, it looks like addition is faster. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Two times two. Four. Two plus two. Four. It looks the same thing. So it's like, what's the big deal about multiplication? All right, let's do three. Three plus three. Six. Three times three. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Now we're talking. Okay, four times, four plus four. Eight. Eight. Four times four. Have you seen, are, are you understanding multiplying? When it says, be fruitful and multiply, it's not addition. Let's go a little. Five plus five. Five times five. You see the distance now? Yes. You want to go to six in your mind? Six plus six is what? Four. Just right there. Six times six. six. May the multiplying power yes. come upon you. May, may the understanding of the multiplying grace that is upon you. He said to Adam, he didn't suggest to him. He said, be fruitful. 
He says, be it. He didn't say think it. Be it. Mm. Be it. Carry it in your being. Be it. Whatever you touch multiplies. May you come under that grace. May you have an understanding of multiplication. May what God gives you, may it multiply on your watch. See, somebody is looking at you and think you are operating in addition. But I command you to understand that there is a multiplying grace on you. There is a multiplying and anointing on you. You would take Kenya far. You would take your village far. You would take the business to the next level. You cannot be fired because there is a multiplying anointing on you. See, that anointing was on Joseph. Whatever he touched, prospered. May it come on you. That same anointing was on Jacob. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can take everything you want. All I need is one. And I just keep working it. Because multiplication just needs a little time. Just a little time. Yeah, just a little time. Yeah, time is not the enemy of multiplying. No, no, no. It's, it's his friend. He just needs a bigger base. Can you lift your hands and say, I can increase? I can increase. Come on, come on. Can you say I can increase? Because God has commanded me to increase. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. It's, it's, it's a determination of God. Be fruitful and multiply. I come with a multiplying anointing on my head. I come into a space and you must multiply. It's not if and but. No, I am a one created to induce multiplication in the kingdom. So I refuse for you to stay in the addition column. Move over. Yes. Move over. Yes. Be fruitful, but by all means multiply. Can someone just thank Jesus for, for oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. See, that's why he doesn't have a problem starting with. You know, he wanted to bring us all in the world. How many people did he start with? Yeah. Two. Devil also caught on. So he wanted to introduce trouble into the world. How many people did he go to? Now God said, okay. We'll settle this in once and for all. So God wanted to settle the issue. How many people did he send? All it takes is just one person. That has a multiplying grace. Look at Jesus hanging on the cross. It looks like it was finished. You joker. <laughs> a time is coming. The multiplying power is going to kick in. When resurrection takes place, it's phenomenal. You know, multiplying is resurrection power. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When he rose from the dead, look at the mystery. Jesus was hanging out with Lazarus, who he rose from the dead, right? Go and read your Bible. You know, people didn't come for Jesus. They came to see Lazarus. <laughs> Why? He was carrying multiplying power. All of a sudden, he's a different person. When you are drawing from resurrection power, influence is different. I command you to go to work with a different grace. Can I make this announcement to you? I announced it to the guys, but they didn't take me too serious. But it's okay, you know, some will catch on later, right? Everyone ought to be a specialist. Yeah, everybody. There's something you are good at than somebody else. Yeah, everybody. I saw that bass player, man, the way he was thumping the thing. He's the best in this room. So everybody is best at something here. You better believe it. Stop, stop always thinking that I'm good at nothing. No, 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 no. Now, let me illustrate it. Come here, sweetie. Come here. Yeah, come, come. Anybody? Now, you know, this beautiful lady, every part of her body is a specialist. Yeah. The ear is a specialist. The nose is a specialist. The little toe is a specialist. Her, her, her kidneys are specialists. Her lo- yeah, yeah. Every part of her, her hair is a specialist. Not, not, not of the other parts can compete with the hair. Every part of her, her nose is a specialist. Her eyelashes, specialist. Eyebrow, specialist. If you challenge eyebrow, sweat will get into your eyes so quickly. 
You know, if you think the little toe is not important, let's cut it off and see. You will see your balance off. Everything is a specialist. Now, we are described as the body of what? Meaning that if the body is specializing, that means I have a specialty. I am special. I have a niche anointing. I call you to come into the niche anointing over your life. You must stand wise. My time is up. (laughs) So, look at the nails. Specialty. Everything about you. I don't know who you are in this house or whatever house you belong to, but I stop you from this day forward, from just being hidden. I command you to come out. I need you. The body needs you. The Bible says that the earth has been waiting for the manifestation. There is a gift in you this house needs. There is a gift in you this nation needs. I refuse for this nation to suffer because you folded your arms and you thought you were no good. No, 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 no. It's a lie. The earth has been waiting for your manifestation. Everybody is coming out. When are you going to come out? There is something about you. I don't care who said what, but the last time I checked, you are special. You know, listen, I am so special that can you believe it? When I comb my head this morning, the hairs that dropped off, God knows the count. Your hairbrush, the hair that is in it, that hair you left at the hairdresser, God knows. So if your hair, which carries DNA, is important to God, then come on. Come on. You are too anointed to waste your grace. Enough of, you know, the word not manifesting. No. We have a team. We sing the team. We go home. You know why? You don't believe it. To them that believe what? All things are possible. So the devil will convince you don't believe it and it won't be possible. You know, we sit in Kenya and everybody is coming to Kenya. And you want to leave Kenya. <laughs> Jesus. So I was having a conversation with, with the pastors that picked me up and brought me here. And I said, the day should come when Kenyans go to retire in England. If everybody is coming here, why are you leaving? Have you seen anybody in Nairobi going to the village? Now it's hitting your head. If this place was a dump, like they tell you, I'll tell you a true story. This guy I was pastoring, he had a business in Nigeria, and they sent, no, before he had his business in Nigeria, he was working in the States in a company, and they sent some guys from the States to the company in Nigeria. Now this dude has to report back after a certain amount of time. He goes back and guess what he says? Nigeria is very bad. He convinces them not to send anybody, so they'll send him back. Do you understand? Yeah, so he says bad things about the place, so they will send him back. If it was bad, why are they here? Open your eyes! And when you don't love a land, the land closes itself to you. May God open you up these days. All right, now write these things down. Number one, I believe it. We're talking about the Word of God. I don't have time to, to go into it, so we'll continue tomorrow, right? You enjoyed yourself? Yeah. You're going to come back tomorrow? My friend, where are you? You're going to come tomorrow? Yeah, yeah I'm going to continue. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
But by the way, you know, how, how many people do you think would like to hear me? Yeah, so br- bring some, bring some people. Yeah. Power of testimony. It works. All right, so you've got to believe it. Mm-hmm. The word of God, number one. Number two, you've got to receive it. It's not everything you believe that you've received. Three, you've got to make it your own. There are packages that come to my house that I receive the packet. Yeah? But it's not my packet. So you just don't believe it. You just don't receive it. You've got to what? Own it. What you don't own, you can't use. It's illegal. The devil would take you to court. He's an accuser. He's always accusing us. The guy doesn't believe what you said, Father. He, 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 it's not even in his heart. Allow me to touch him. God said, well, you know, I, I, you can touch him, but don't go too far. He's a righteous God. He's a righteous God. So if sin is coming and you've kept the word in your heart and the sin is trying to harass you, sin will look at the word in you and say, Mm-mm, wrong address. The wrong person wants to sign a deal with you because you've been, you've been hanging out with truth. Yeah, truth at night will visit you in a dream. Truth will say, don't sign the paper. Truth will open your eyes to see that cross that will put you in a bind. You say, you say why? Because the truth will set you free. You don't have to fight for yourself. Truth will get involved. Amen. All of a sudden, he will get a running stomach. He won't be there to sign the paper. You'll be free. Truth will set you free. Anyone under the sound of my voice that is being trapped, being set up to be trapped, I declare to you that that trap will not get you. You know why? Your eyes will be opened. You will not walk as blind. Then, after making it yours, number four is then God gets involved. God gets involved. You know, sometimes God waits. You know, there's certain things he would do by himself. He doesn't need you. But there are other things he needs you to get involved. He's not a, he's not a father who spoils you. Yeah? What you don't get involved with, you wouldn't know how to keep. If you don't climb the mountain yourself, and we put you on top and tell you to come down, you will fall. You will kill yourself. You know where to step. So sometimes, the, the reason why your, the challenges are, look so tough now is because when you get up there, you know, you have to come down. Yes. But you, your feet will become now like hind's feet. Know how to navigate the terrain. That's why he says, that word shall become a lamp to your what? Feet. And a light to your path. Like the headlights of your car. You know, when your car is parked, it looks like it's not going anywhere. But put that light on and start moving. The light takes you. Everywhere you're going, the light is going. Everywhere you're going, that word is ahead of you. That word will take, it will separate you from the things that you're not supposed to get involved. I place your feet on the highway of holiness. And that highway of holiness, it will kick any ravenous animal that comes on it. Anyone that is not qualified to be on that highway, that highway will kick them off. Stay! Stay! Stay with the word! Stay with the word! Stay with the word! And when the Holy Spirit gets involved, my goodness, God will begin to escalate. So tomorrow, we'll get into the text of what I wanted to teach. You know, why, why do you think that uh, we should come to church and I'll read a Bible verse and da 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 da? Why? This kingdom. Did you see Jesus reading the text all the time? I'm, trying, I'm not trying to mess with your mind, but I need you to adjust. Yeah? I was talking the word all the time anyway. Yes. Colossians 3.16. We'll, we'll close with this, yeah? 
So what I'll do is I'll give you the text for tomorrow. So Isaiah 55, 8 to 11. Then we'll do John 1, 1 to 14. All right? John chapter number 1, verses 1 to 14. So let's just read Colossians and we'll pray. Are you blessed tonight? You're going places. You're not, you're not, stop telling yourself you're old. Do you hear me? You're not old enough. Are you older than Moses? <laughs> 80 years he started his ministry. Please. Stop telling yourself that. And the devil gets involved. She, she, she's given up. I had her, I had her. God, you had her. So why shouldn't we harass her? Mind your words. You are a king. Mind your words. Don't, don't join people who, who complain. Kenya is hard. Don't join them. Kenya is not hard. Yes. My goodness. If Kenya was hard, why are people coming here? Even the animals, we've given them state security. How much more you? Please. Don't you protect the animals? You. And you, and you, and you, and me. We all protect the animals. If we protect the animals, you think God will not protect us? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwelling. Anyone who takes care of the land, God will defend your life. Amen. So Colossians 3.16. My goodness. Oh, it's up there, right? Can we read it together? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. My goodness. So everyone is supposed to be a singer, right? <laughs> so those of us who have key X, hey, praise the Lord. <laughs> you, you have to endure us. <laughs> Let means permit. Allow it. Allow the word. I declare to your spirit. Permit the word of God. Permit the word of God. Allow the listen. You know some, some of the things I do? How many of you like binding and loosing? You, all you do is using your binding for the devil. You are giving him too much binding. Bind the word of God to yourself. I bind the scripture to my life. His words are not what? Return to him void. Why? Because I bound it. Here, that word that came, it's not going anywhere. It is staying here. It will prosper here. It will prosper in the thing in which it was sent. It will do everything. I will finish sucking the life out of that word in my life. It's not going anywhere. So are you going to be? Bind yourself with the word of God. Why do you think that the, the, the Jews were taught to bind the thing on their front legs? Mm. Bind it! The word of God is too loose around you. Permit it. Can someone say, I permit the word? I permit the word. You know, permission is power. Whatever you permit is permitted. What you don't permit is not permitted. So what you permit would come. What you don't permit will not enter. So you read the word, but you don't permit it. Permit the word of God to what? Dwell. Let it settle in you. How? Richly. This is English. You can translate it to Israeli. It sounds the same. Let it dwell. Let it settle down. Let not the word be jumping. No more situational ethics with the word of God. Today I have a headache, so the word doesn't work. It works. The Hebrew boy said, even if he doesn't save us, we, we will not bow our knees. Even if he chooses not to do it for me, it doesn't mean he doesn't do it. He does it. There's a reason why he's not doing it. But as for me, I believe it. Bind the word. Let it. Permit it. Can someone lift their hands and permit the prophecy of God on your life? Yes. Permit it. 
permit it. Let it dwell. Let that prophecy dwell. Let that word of God concerning you dwell. Can you stand to your feet? Makatota bragadaya, labraze katota branda baha, laza katabra, lusa katakayaba, lande karagata yamaha. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now listen, listen. I, I want everyone who has not been that serious with their word, run and come quickly. Run and come to the front. You you have not been that serious with your word. Yeah, you read your word, but it's a big deal. Your office manual is even more important to you than your word. Some of you are not coming because you think somebody will see you. God sees you. Yeah? This is agreeing with God. And I don't care whether you are a pastor. Sometimes you love preaching. You don't love the word of God. I don't care whether you are a deacon. It has nothing to do with that. God just wants to see somebody who is saying, Tonight, I value your word. Yes. And why? Because he wants to give you a word. Now, if you don't love it, why is he going to give it to you? Now, if you're here, just lift up your hands. You know why? Because God has given you things to accomplish. And those things have been waiting for you to embrace the word of God. That is how you're going to finish the things that you're going to become. By the word of God. It's by the word of God that you're going to stay. By the word of God that you'll keep your levels. Yeah. By the word of God, you will not back down. By the word of God, the anointing will increase yeah. in your life. So as you stand with your hands up, just say, God, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't understand it, but now I do. And I'm making a commitment. I'm not going to lay hands on you for you to... No, no, no. you got to say it to God himself. Say, I want the word of God. I love the word of God. The word of God is important. Today, Today, I submit to loving the word of God, to loving God. I love you, God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the letters you sent to me. Thank you. Thank you. Matasuka, Mekei Sadunia, Manzikando Kuruagaha, Lendo Sagitaya, Lasotaya, Lustaka Matea, Lusagitamando Sadiria, Pande Katuandakara. Thank you. Now, look at me. Look at me. Keep your hands up. I'm not punishing you. Just, yeah. I'm not punishing you. I'm just, when you lift up your hands, it's like the evening sacrifice, okay? Yes. When you lift up your hands, you know, Moses was on the, on the mountain with the hands up and he was delivering people. It, he wasn't talking. It was hands up. Because when these hands are full of the word of God, yeah, lay hands on the sick. Yes. Lifting up holy hands. He said, men, I would that men everywhere pray, lifting up holy hands. Men, you've got to learn how to lift up your hands in prayer. Lifting up your hands for the nation. Lifting up your hands. Sometimes your children, just lift up your hands. You don't, you don't even have to talk. You lift up your hands. You lift up your hands. You lift them before the Lord. Yeah, and God would get a hold of them. Yeah, when Aaron was supposed to bless, he stretched his hands. There's something about the extending of your hand. When you meet me and you want to, 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 to tell me I'm welcome, you extend your hand. And by the extending of your hand, I become welcome in the atmosphere because your hand was extended. Extend your hands. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Now listen, what God wants to give you, what God wants to give you is so big. Yeah? It's so big. But you want to say, God, I want it anyway. Yeah? You want to say to God, God, I want it anyway. So with your hands lifted, say, God, I thank you for not forgetting me. For not forgetting me. Even, even though I didn't love your word, like you expect me to, thank you for drawing me. Thank you for not giving up on me. Now I stand here today in my right mind saying that I recognize the value of your word. I will treasure it. I will keep it in my heart. I will meditate on it day or night. I will meditate. I will keep it. I will let it dwell in me richly. Richly. It was my treasure. I will make it my treasure. Today, I commit to the word of God. I give myself to the word of God. Amen. Now keep your hands up. Look at me. There were two things. When the apostles started the work, that were too important.
to give up. One was prayer. Second was the word. I mean, think about it. Our movement as the body of Christ, the movement as the kingdom people, was hinging on prayer and the word. We can't get away from the word. So David said, I gave myself to prayer. The apostles increased it and said, we give ourselves to prayer and the word. Now with your hands lifted, I want you to say, I give myself to the word of God. Now those of you who said it but didn't mean it, can you say it one more time? I give myself to the word of God. I hear some of you need to say it in Swahili so you mean it. Yeah? So say it in Swahili. If that will make you mean it more. And say it loud. Now we're going to do it for the last time. You can choose English or Swahili. Whichever way. I just need you to mean it. I give myself to the word of God. I give myself to the word of God. Now I release the grace that accompanies the word to begin to follow you. I release that anointing that was released tonight. Let the angels that hearken unto the word of God. Now some of you, your angels are going to work now because you're going to be dealing with the word of God. You would have not only angelic visitations, But angels will go on assignment for you. Angels will defend you. I release the angelic company now. Let the earth enjoy heaven now. As it is in heaven. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. The word will set you free. The word. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Listen, you're going far. What do you do? Come on, you just finished school. You're going too far. Do you hear me? Come this way. Look, I don't care about whether you feel you're a good student or not. That's not the point. The point is belief. You remember those dreams when you were a kid? Why you really left them? What happened? Because of a grade, please. Did Bill Gates finish school? He didn't. Academia is no determinant of your intelligence. Did Adam go to school? Did Jesus go to school? Is school bad? No. But it's not a determinant. There are different ways of learning. Do you hear me? You know Serena Williams, right? Do you want to shake her hand? Does she have A's? The Lord take you from here. Amen. And let the word dwell in you richly. Let the performance of everything God has for you come to pass. Listen, you know, the, 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 the word of God has touched you already. Some of you are waiting for my hand. Stop waiting for my hand. Take the word. Amen. Do you hear me? Take the word. Yes. You don't need my hand. Yes. Yeah, take the word. Be strong, woman of God. Be strong. Not in yourself. Be strong in the word. Look. Be strong in the word. Look at me. Be strong in the word. Amen. Said, look at me. Don't be afraid. Be strong in the word. Be strong in the word. That word would make all the difference. Let the blessings of God be upon you. Yeah? Work with the word. Work with the word. Work with the word. Come here. As you come around the word, the word will do you good. Where is the doctor that came to the airport? 
Did she come tonight? She's You're going to be so sharp because of the word of God. There's a sensitivity that is going to happen. Yeah. It will look like you, even though you have the medical knowledge, it will look like, you know, you're putting your word of knowledge. You know, you will know some of the things even before. I think sometimes it happens, but you don't believe it. But from tonight, you believe that God can use your brain and use your spirit there's a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty gives your spirit man understanding and a lot of medical remedies came by dreams but we never told people but it's of god come here when somebody falls under the power don't help them get up and don't help yourself you, you're a doctor. When do you operate us? What do you tell us? Lay down. Yeah. Till you regain consciousness. Don't try and get up. So if the Holy Spirit was trying to operate on you, what would happen? Yeah, you en- enjoy yourself. You cut off this. Yeah. So it doesn't make me happy when you lie down for a long time. It makes God happy. <laughs> How many of you is present here? The word. Wherever the word is, he's there. Yeah? Wherever the word is, he's there. Come here, sweetheart. Come here. Yes, you. You see, I didn't even call her. She's coming. You, I called you and you're, you're asking me, let it change from this day. Yeah? You're too special. Come here anyway. Let the blessings of God follow you. Amen. Hear your master. Look at me. You are greatness. Yeah? Stop being shy. Okay? It's not a nice word. The meaning of shy is fear. Are you fearful? Or you like to be shy? No? Yeah? You're not even looking at me. You're looking everywhere else. Look at me. Look at me. What you don't look at, you can't have. Yeah? Look at me. Why, is it culture? There's no culture. Kenyans look you in the eye. From the airport, you're looking me in the eye. Yeah? So it's all culture. Yeah. You're looking everywhere apart from me. Look at me. Is it difficult to look at me? Yeah, so look at me. Look at me. Keep your eye on me. Okay? Listen, Jesus said the eye is the window of the soul. You can get a lot from me by looking at me. Yeah? Babies, when they are feeding, they look into the eyes of their mother. And the mother transfers to the baby hope a future the spirit of the mother speaks to the the child through the eyes look at me look at me I'm going to say it for the last time let your spirit learn to obey you can do it stop looking elsewhere look at me look at me look at me you're going to excel Look at me. And you need to keep looking. Yeah? You need to be able to look. And don't look anywhere else. Everywhere else you look takes in information. That can distract you. I need you to keep your eyes on my eyes. Keep your eyes on my eyes. Don't look at my glasses. Look at my eyes. The Lord is going to use you. But focus is going to be your strength. Yeah? And you will never get distracted. Yeah? You will be such a champion for God. And the Lord will honor your house because of you. Father, thank you. Open your eyes. May he who created you honor you. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you.
I'm glad I brought you know you. Hallelujah. You are my Lord. Glory to God. Somebody just wave your hands and just give him glory. You make me lie down in green pastures. You make me want it for nothing. You fill my heart, Lord, with honey from your sweet, sweet word. Jesus. Let's put our hands together and just give Pastor Fifi a good God bless you. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah, we thank God for His grace. We are coming to the close of our service today. I want us to just get a hold of